everybody, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and in this video we're going to be talking all about machine embroidery. Now pretty soon I'm going to be jumping right into a new video series on machine embroidery. I know a lot of you out there that are following along and have been waiting to follow along with this video series are either complete newbies to machine embroidery, maybe you don't even know what it is, uh, some of you have embroidery machines, some of you are in the market for one, and some of you may even be thinking, do I need an embroidery machine and what exactly is it? So I'm hoping that this video will help give you some more information so you can kind of wrap your head a little bit more around what this new world of machine embroidery is, especially if you've never tried it. If you do needlework of any kind or arts and crafts and things, you're probably familiar with the word embroidery. But there is a difference between machine embroidery and hand embroidery. Hand embroidery traditionally is done with a hoop of some kind to stabilize the fabric while you stitch by hand up and down. The thread is typically thicker, even thicker than a thread that you may use in your sewing machine. So either an embroidery floss or anywhere from like a 12, 8, 5 or even a, a, th a 3 weight cotton thread typically used uh, for hand embroidery. The stitches are obviously going to be bigger, you're doing them by hand, so it is a process that takes longer, okay? Machine embroidery is done by machine. Now this has been around for decades and there's so many fancy machines on the market. I mean, th as fast as these machines can stitch, it really is super impressive. And there's no way that you could compare the stitching on a machine doing embroidery than you can by hand, okay? So one of the differences is obviously it's done a lot faster. You can do more uh, with machine embroidery. Now in the, in the category of machine embroidery, there's two different types, right? Some is the computerized way that you basically upload a design to your embroidery machine. You tell it how you want it to stitch. It tells you what color to start off with and you start stitching the design that way. Another way to machine embroider, and that is also sometimes used with a hoop, but it's using your regular sewing machine. It's kind of more in the realm of free motion quilting, except you're not necessarily quilting a quilt. You're simply moving the fabric around while the stationary needle of the machine is stitching up and down. So you can do the same type of monograms uh, that a computerized embroidery machine can do, but instead you're in charge. So you have to move it and guide it and create the outlines of what you want the stitching to fill in. Whereas on the computerized version, the machine is doing all that for you. You basically will change the thread, make sure that you have the hoop, uh, the stabilizer and everything in position for the machine to do its work and then it will stitch it out for you. So if you're a seamstress or a quilter, you may be thinking, why in the world would I want to get into machine embroidery? Now the way I like to think about it, whether it's hand embroidery or machine, in the most basic sense, it's kind of a way for you to embellish your projects. So either store-bought projects, like you can buy a blank sweatshirt and add a monogram, a design, some funky imagery to it, artwork and things like that, or you can make a project and embroider on it as well. Now there is a whole other section of machine embroidery called in the hoop projects, and we'll get into that later on in the video series, but just so you know in basic terms. In the most basic sense, it's a way for you to customize uh, and embellish and add an extra touch of something to your either store-bought projects or handmade projects, okay? So think about it that way. As a quilter, you can, instead of creating patchwork quilt blocks, you can embroider on fabric by itself and create those quilt blocks. Another way you can do it is by actually using quilting stitches and designs in the embroidery machine to quilt through the three layers of your projects. I know several people who quilt their quilts on an embroidery machine. So there's a lot of different options and I'm here with my new video series to kind of walk you through some of these things. So as we move along in the process, you'll start to see whether or not this is something that fits in with the type of projects that you do, either for fun or for sale. Now let's talk a little bit about embroidery machines. What exactly is an embroidery machine? Just so you know, if you have a basic, say, mechanical sewing machine that does straight stitches and zigzag stitches, if it does not say that it is specifically an embroidery machine, then you will not be able to do some of the projects that we'll be working on going forward because these will require digital designs be downloaded and uploaded to your machines so that the machine can stitch it out. So if you don't already have an embroidery machine, then you'll need to either get one or kind of look forward to, to seeing if that's something that you want to do or that you want to get into. Now, 
there's do, two different main types, I would say, of embroidery machines. There are machines that are sewing slash embroidery machine. They're combo machines, right? You can use it to sew your projects, to make your Patrick pieces, to make your clothes. And then when you want to embroider on it, there's basically an adapter kind of thing. Sometimes it's usually like a big arm that you just install in your machine and you would set the machine to embroidery mode instead of just the basic sewing mode. So it's a combination machine and you can go back and forth. A lot of people, if they're going to splurge their whole budget just to get one machine, will typically get a combination machine. That way they can do both with just the one machine. I will tell you a little bit about why I prefer the second type of embroidery machine, which is a standalone embroidery machine. And what that means is that it is a big sewing machine, right? but it only does embroidery. So it looks like a sewing machine, it stitches like one, but it's only for embroidery. Meaning, I will not be able to make my kids an apron on my standalone embroidery machine. It's not just for like select a stitch and start sewing. No, it's for machine embroidery, okay? So any projects you can do on an embroidery machine, that's what you would use it for. And I'll tell you why I prefer a standalone embroidery machine to a combination one. Take me back maybe nine years ago, I had a sewing machine slash embroidery combo. It was the only machine I had, and I will tell you that I hated it because I always wanted to be working on a project. And when I swapped it out to embroidery mode, I couldn't sew. I had no other sewing machine. I had to sit there and wait for the machine to beep at me. I'd take the thread, change the thread color, press the start button again. It would stitch out another section of the design. It beep at me again. I changed the thread and I was basically just standing there staring at this machine stitching and I couldn't like let it go or leave it to go work on another project because I had no other machine. Now, fast forward nine years later, I have a bunch of different machines. So I prefer an embroidery machine and I would recommend a standalone embroidery machine for those of you that already have sewing machines, okay? If you have a sewing machine that you use to make your clothes or to make your quilts with, keep it. Don't trade it up. In that case, I find that you can really get more bang for your buck if you max out your budget on a standalone machine. If you have already a machine that sews and does other stuff, and you go ahead and buy a sewing and embroidery combo, which I know a lot of people do, and they'll say, I just set up that machine on embroidery mode and I don't ever sew with it. Well, if you would have spent all that money to get a machine that just did embroidery, you'd be able to get it with either larger hoops, more hoops, maybe an upgrade on it, um, and maybe more bells and whistles because you're not even using the sewing part of it. Does that make sense? So for me, instead of getting a combination machine and setting it up to just embroidery mode, I prefer to keep my sewing machine that I have and I love to use for making stuff and then just have a standalone embroidery machine. So currently, I have three different standalone embroidery machines. So if you're in the market for one, uh, you will want to stay watching these videos for sure because I'll be showing you uh, different features and what to look out for um, at your budget range. So I'll tell you the three machines that I have and I'll actually link to them below. I will tell you that my favorite one right now is the Baby Lock Spirit. Out of the three, it is the most expensive, okay? So there's three different machines. I have an entry level one that does not have a touch screen. Then the other two do have a stylus and a larger screen for you to do uh, and apply the different functions on the larger screen. So we'll get into those a little bit later. But just so you know, it, when we're talking price ranges, embroidery machines can run you anywhere from $300 to $15,000. So a lot of times people are not really sure or, or if they're kind of new into buying machines, they're not really sure what the budget range looks like. You need to find something obviously that fits within your budget range, okay? If you know that you're gonna be wanting to take this to another level and maybe start an at-home business with it or you wanna be maybe adding little monograms or names to kids items and things like that, then consider you know those options and what all the machine that you're gonna buy is going to allow you to do. I will tell you that the number one complaint with embroidery machines is that people buy a machine uh, that's in their price range or they wanted to save a little money and went lower at the cost and then they feel limited or restricted to the hoop size that the machine is capable of using to make projects. And the hoop size, that's gonna limit you to what size design your machine can stitch out. So some of the higher end machines will have hoops that are like this big. You can like put it over your whole body. Some of the smaller and lower end machines are just gonna allow you to do designs that fit within a four inch by four inch range. So if you know that you just wanna add names and little things to projects, 
then a four by four hoop is going to be plenty for you. But if you think that you may want to start kind of expanding and adding, say, borders across the bottom hem of jackets or sweatshirts and things like that, then you're either going to have to start looking into larger hoops or multi-position hoops and things like that. And there's so much in machine embroidery. We'll kind of, kind of walk you through little by little. I know that I'm throwing out a ton of information, but I kind of just want to, I think, touch on more of the basic things um, and kind of like the large topics that you want to be keeping in the back of your mind as you go forward and searching for a machine, buying one, or uh, deciding what all you want to do with the one that you have currently. So when it comes to price ranges, you may be thinking, why in the world is there such a huge, huge uh, range of prices? Well, again, it's going to limit you to the size of the design that you can stitch out. And then from there on, it's like all these bells and whistles. The higher end machines are going to have one step uh, needle threader. So it's not just like a needle threader that you have to do yourself. Like most sewing machines will have these days. It's literally one that you just thread the machine, you press a button and it threads the needle by itself. Uh, some will beep at you and let you know, Hey, the bobbin that you currently have in the machine does not have enough thread to stitch out this entire design. So it reads how many stitches. If it's a 10,000 stitch design and your bobbin only has enough thread to stitch out 4,000, it's gonna tell you, okay? And it's gonna save you the time before you get halfway through the design and then you see beep beep, you ran out of bobbin thread, okay? So a lot of the different things that you may not have even thought of, you'll see that those are extra features on some of these more expensive and obviously higher end machines. Some have lasers, styluses, ones that you can plug the USB directly into. Most of them nowadays do that. The older machine I had didn't, it took cartridges. So with technology and with the advance of technology, a lot of these newer machines are really, really getting high tech and they allow you so many more features than you even thought that you needed in an embroidery machine. Now let's talk a little bit about designs. There are literally millions and millions of embroidery designs out on the web for you to buy. You can buy them on CDs. You can buy them uh, as instant download files. Um, there's tons of ways that you can get them. Local quilt shops will sell them. Your fabric stores will sell you embroidery designs on CDs that they uh, order in from different companies and different designers that will stitch them out. You can get them in person if you take a workshop or a class. And a lot of them you can download on the internet. Some are free and some are for cost. Now keep in mind, a lot of the free designs out there that you can find are uh, typically digitized using an automatic, uh, an automated digitizing system. So it may not be the best quality design and it may not stitch out in a way that you think makes sense to you. So the next time you go to stitch out, if you already have an embroidery machine, have a look at how the machine is stitching the design. If it kind of doesn't make sense to you, like why would the design stitch out here, then jump all the way to here and then come back to here, then that is usually a red flag that it was uh, done with a comp an automated system that digitized it and it wasn't an actual person that went through and digitized it by hand. Typically the machine will come with some type of library of built-in designs. They're usually not very fancy, maybe a couple monograms, some simple images like little animals, some flowers, some little plants and things like that is typically what you'll find. And those are great ones to get started with, but know that you'll need an embroidery machine, uh, the hoop that comes with it, uh, you'll need some type of designs to stitch out. And then we get into all kind of the uh, other things, notions and things that you'll need, like stabilizers and thread, which each one of those categories on their own uh, really demands an entire online course for. But we'll little by little start chipping at all the information, different things, and I'll be sharing with you obviously just my experience, what I would recommend, and I really like to keep things simple. I'm not one to have 75 different stabilizers on hand. I like to keep it down to the basics and I feel like once you as a new uh, machine embroiderer get your hands on just the basic things that you need then you'll be able to kind of build that confidence up complete some really successful projects and then you can start trying new things and different things from there now what is digitize for those of you that are not that tech friendly computerized machine embroidery is all about techie stuff. <laughs> it's computerized. Uh, it, 
you have to deal with formats of these different digital designs. Some people digitize their own designs. I'm digitizing my own designs. Now, when we talk about designs, we talk about digitized designs. And digitization is basically a way of taking some form of artwork, an image, a line drawing, a picture, cartoon, whatever it is, and turning it into a file in a specific format that's read by your embroidery machine and every brand of embroidery machine typically will read some type of different format. So the design has to be formatted for your specific machine, okay? And then it's a way that the machine recognizes the artwork in the way of stitches. So it looks at the design as stitches and that's exactly what it stitches out onto your project, okay? So that is what we talk about when we talk about digitizing an image. A lot of times you'll see companies have a logo. They'll send it to a company to get it digitized and that means they're taking the artwork either in vector format or a JPEG picture image and they will turn it into a digitized file that now an embroidery machine can read and stitch out just as the logo image looks but made up of stitches. So that's all it is. It's just a way of turning art into a file that an embroidery machine can read and stitch it out. Okay, so that's what it is to digitize, uh, to use a digitized image in your embroidery designs. Now really briefly with the thread, there's typically the two most popular types of embroidery threads are gonna be rayon and polyester. The polyester is color fast, meaning if you embroider something on a shirt and you have to bleach the shirt, the color will still stay. The rayon, however, if you bleach it, you're gonna bleach the color out. So keep that in mind for the different projects. There's a lot of other factors and things uh, where you might wanna use one over the other and we'll get into that in future videos, but just so you know what's out there and what to look out for. Then when it comes to stabilizers, there's like a million stabilizers and it's super overwhelming, but typically uh, a tear away, some type of a cutaway and a water soluble stabilizer I think will get you pretty uh, well started. Now, embroidery is not just for grown-ups. My kids love to do machine embroidery with me, and it's, I think, a fun way to get them involved. If maybe they're not old enough to start using a sewing machine, I think machine embroidery is a fabulous way. They get to pick their own threads, they can choose designs, um, and decide what they wanna do. Most of the machines these days, you can add your name or a monogram or something to customize their own projects. So if you're working with grandkids and you're making them little pillows or pajamas or whatever it is, they can also have a hand in it maybe not in making the actual project if they're too young but they can help pick out colors and help you pick out the design of how exactly they want their name or a little image to look so here's a little pill that my daughter made all by herself I digitized this little zinnia flower because she loves flowers and she went ahead and chose the font she chose all the colors she chose the fleece and she actually sewed this all up by herself including the little hand stitching shut here after she stuffed it. Now my daughter's five years old. So this would be a great little project to work on with a daughter, a niece, a grandkid. My son loves to embroider and my kids love making their own little pillows. But just to show you an idea, this is a super easy design. It's stitched on fleece, just the flower and her name. It doesn't take us more than 20 minutes to make this entire project. So that's just a simple little project that I thought I would show you. You can see a super little cute pillow. This is something very basic. I think it would be a great place for a lot of beginners to start with and I know that any of you out there can totally do this. Now if you want to find out more about my video series on machine embroidery, I'm going to be doing a lot of cool things via email newsletter. So there's a link in the description box below. For anybody who's interested in learning more about machine embroidery from me, go ahead and click that link and enter your email address. That's gonna add you to an email list that I'm running just for machine embroidery. So in that email, if you're subscribed, you'll get notifications. We're gonna give away some freebie designs. I'll have information for different products, sales. I'm working on my own products, which are almost here shipped to me. So we're gonna be putting together bundled packages and kits of things that you can purchase as a beginner. And that way, you know, you kind of don't have to surf the whole world and all these different shops to find what you need, I'll be providing them for you in the form of some boxed kits and that way you'll know exactly what you need to get started with some of the future projects that I'll be teaching you on in the next video series.
So I think I will leave it at that. I think I left you with a ton of information. I will be expanding on all these different topics that I've covered here. Just know that some fun and new machine embroidery tutorials are coming very soon. And again, if you're interested in signing up for that email list, so you'll get notified every time there's a new video, that I have a new design up, or that I'm featuring a design in an actual project, which is exactly what I plan to do. I'm not just gonna tell you, hey, this is how you make this. I'm gonna walk you through so you can see what types of designs you would typically look out for depending on the application, right? The size of the project, the size of the hoop that your machine can stitch through, what is the fiber content of the project that you're working on? Whether it's quilting cottons, fleece, a stretch knit, a mesh, there's a lot of different things that go into it and you need to know uh, what you have to use when so that you can get some really great and successful results in your finished embroidery projects. So again, there's a link in the description box below. You can click it, enter your email address, and that will sign you up for my machine embroidery email list so you can be notified of all that. Then make sure that you click the subscribe button and that will notify you every time I upload a new video tutorial right here to my YouTube channel. So thanks again for watching. Sorry that I talked your ear off, but I hope you'll stick around. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit it with a thumbs up below. Share it across the different social media sites and I will see you in the next video. And in this video, we're talking all about machine embroidery. Machine embroidery, machine embroidery. And in this video tutorial, it's not a tutorial. Pretty soon, I'm gonna be kicking off an entire series of videos on machine embroidery. So I thought I would kick it off. I already said this. If you, oh my goodness. And usually uh, uh, needle workers, needle workers, really? I don't even know what I'm saying. You continue to hear me say, digitize, digitize, the, digitize, digitize, oh, digitize, oh, little dread.